Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome to this Channel Ramble, Baldur's Gate 3 edition. Um, basically I'm just going to be playing Baldur's Gate 3 while I talk about the channel a bit. <laughs> I did one of these before with Darkest Dungeon. I'm going to try to do, if I do these um, periodically, you know, every couple months, every few months, I'll try to do a different game each time. Um, you know, I'll probably cycle around because I only have a few <laughs> that I really like playing. Baldur's Gate 3 is awesome. As an aside, as a quick aside at the beginning, if you guys haven't played it, you should. I know it's you know fifth edition, and it's it's. But man, Larian just went above and beyond. I know everybody knows this. It's not it's it's not a surprise at this point. <laughs> Baldur's Gate three is incredible. Um, I loved Divinity. I loved Divinity Original Sin. Divinity Original Sin two. Uh, so Larian Studios has been great for a long time, obviously. And and I was so excited. I had this game in the alpha, and I was you know at that point it was obviously alpha, and I was like hmm. I don't know how this is going. It's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to have to see. But then I remembered when, you know, I, I had Divinity 2 in the alpha, and it was real bad, actually, at first. I didn't like it at all. And then, um, yeah, and then by the time the actual game came out, it was one of my favorite video games of all time. And so the same thing is true for Baldur's Gate 3. I, I, I wasn't that impressed when it first came out. I was like, okay, it's clanky, but obviously it's alpha. I'll wait and see. And then I didn't really play it much until the final release. And I was like, oh, man, yeah. So I beat the game once. I'm playing through the game on uh, again on Honor. Uh, the honor run with um, which is where you know if you if your party wipes it, it deletes your file game over so and it's the hardest difficulty in terms of monsters and, and all that stuff legendary actions and all that stuff and i'm playing through with three of my friends so we're we're you know probably once every other week or once a week or so we're playing for a few hours and trying to get through the whole game that way it's super fun especially when you play four player co-op like it's just awesome um this is just i loaded an old save from when i was playing and uh, and on on uh, i turned it to, to tactician mode so it's still fairly easy actually um, once you play through the game once, even tactician mode isn't that difficult. Well, at least not for the ordinary fights. The, the big fights are, are, can be a big deal, but it's not a big deal. Anyway, minute, two minutes into the video and I haven't even talked about the purpose of the video. Thank you, first of all. This is, that's what this video is. It's a thank you. Um, I crossed 1,000 subscribers recently, which is, is, which is crazy to me. Uh, I don't know. That might not sound like a lot to some people. I know there's you know, obviously the review channels that have tens of thousands of subscribers and D&D channels with, with you know, hundreds of thousands of subscribers and all that. Uh, but I, I never expected anything. I, I, I really was just starting this channel to kind of talk about my, my Shadow Dark game and, and to review some products that I liked. And as I started to do it, more and more people started to subscribe and it, it, it's kind of nuts. So anyway, thank you to everybody who has subscribed and has welcomed me to the community and has been so, you know, really nice in your comments. Um, yeah, that's super cool. And to everybody who watches the videos, even if you're not subscribed. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I, I, I said in that last channel ramble, which only like 100 people saw, so. <laughs> uh, but um, I'm, I'm never going to monetize this channel. So you don't have to worry about ever seeing ads um, unless YouTube changes its policies and puts ads in front of every video regardless of if they're monetized or not, which I don't even know they might. But uh, I'm, I'm not going to try to make money from this channel. It never was my intention. Um, my intention was to have fun. Uh, to share a hobby that I loved with other people, to share products that I thought were awesome with other people, um, books and adventures and systems and everything that you know I have had a ton of fun reading through and and, and playing through and just you know immersing myself in and, and I wanted to be able to share that with some people, and um, so I'm really really happy that I've been able to do that. Uh, this last video, the the Dragon Slayer video, was super successful for me. I mean, it was you know my my best performing video by far, and I really want to thank people for for clicking on it, watching it, and for the kind comments. For the most part, there were actually a handful, and definitely by far the most, of vitriolic comments came on this video. People who were really really unhappy, a couple with me, but mostly with um, the book itself or the creator. Uh, there you know there's a lot of of hurt feelings, and I think there's a lot of uh, excuses for why people don't like it. Um, but, but I think it tends to be probably personal um, because, you know, people are, I tend, it seems to me that people are willing to accept certain things from creators that they like and defend things from creators that they like that when it comes to a creator they don't like, they are very critical of. And, um, and vice versa, if you don't like a, critic, a creator, you're going to be more harsh and, uh, and go after a particular aspect of a product more than if you like them. Or obviously, and, and obviously, that makes sense to some degree, right? We we defend what we love, and uh, and I I completely understand. I do that myself, right? I, I tend to defend what I love, and I tend to be defensive about what I love, and I I, I try not to be, but I think even you know I, I I definitely fall into the I'm aggressive against the things I don't like. I criticize them, and, but I try not to do that, um, you know, personally. And I think that's the problem is that a lot of the comments that I got on that last channel or last the last video were personal. You know, I don't really have any problem with criticism. In fact, I, I like it. Criticism is necessary. Um, I'm a teacher. And so if you, if you can't criticize, right, you're, you're in major trouble. <laughs> you have to be able to critique and you have to be able to comment. 
and you have to be able to say what you like and you don't like about a particular work, whether it be creative or, or academic or whatever. And um, and to be reasonable in that criticism is essential. But the you know I had a handful of comments that were really personal. Um, one, one commenter said, I should be ashamed of myself for playing Shadow Dark because it was so simplistic. I was like, well, what are you talking about, dude? Um, that sort of comment I'm going to delete or I'm going to silence. Um, I'm not interested in that kind of criticism on my channel. I don't care for it. I, I don't feel I have any obligation to allow it um, on my channel. There are plenty of places online where you can voice criticisms like that where people are happy to to go into you know polemics about people or about systems and and, and to really show you know, how angry they are about a particular thing they see as unjust or unfair or, or bad or whatever it might be. So I'm happy to, I'm happy for people to be able to do that. Just, I'm not going to have that on my channel. I, I'm happy to accept criticism. Um, I really wanted to fireball my, my team right there, but I decided not to. Um, I, uh, I'm uh, happy to accept criticism on my, on my channel, obviously. And, and if I didn't, it would be really absurd of me <laughs> to be reviewing books and not accept criticism myself. So if people, you know, have criticized my methods or if they say I'm wrong about something, happy. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not happy about it, I should say. I don't like to be criticized. No one really does. But I, I, I will accept it and try to be you know, reasonable in my response to it. Um, but if someone's like, hey, dude, you are a bad person for enjoying this game because it's too, too easy. I'm like, nope, that's not true. <laughs> Sorry, man. Not true. Um, and I also don't really want that to become an argument on my page. So I'm going to, I'm as I, I've already started to do, and uh, I, I'm just giving everybody a heads up. If you kind of comment that way, um, personally attacking anybody rather than reasonably criticizing work, I'm going to silence you. Yep. Yep. It's my prerogative as my channel. You can start your own channel and and, and be really aggressive and mean. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I probably won't go there, but I'm sure there will be lots of people who would be happy to, uh, to, uh, to listen. I'm not. As I said, someone in my someone in my video said, you don't get into the drama of like you know Watsi or, or the OSR drama, and I'm like, no man, I don't have time for that nonsense. Um, I'm here to play games, right? I'm here to have fun. Like I've got enough drama in my actual life, right? <laughs> like there's enough stuff happening in my life that it, why, why would I want to bring that into my hobby? And I, I guess some people really thrive on drama; and they get really happy. You know, it fires them up, and, and so I guess that makes sense to me that they would want it kind of in every aspect of their life. I, I don't, I don't thrive on it. I don't like it. So. Um, not interested in putting it into my hobby. Uh, so, you know, keep that in mind. Um, but again, it was really a, a minority, a handful of people who were like that. And I'm not naive. I know the internet's like that. But I just wanted to give people a heads up that if, they, if they're like, oh, I saw a really mean comment and it disappeared, <laughs> right? Uh, well, that's why. Um, or I was, I was all fired up to respond to this guy who was criticizing my book in, in a really mean way. I was going to eviscerate him. And I'm not interested in that. Um, not, not, not interested in the gotcha uh, evisceration takedowns here. Um, moving forward, moving forward. I'm not sure this is going to be a very long video. I just wanted to kind of give you guys a, a review. Moving forward, I'm definitely going to be doing some, um, well, obviously more reviews. I'll be doing that as I go. My Shadow Dark game has slowed down a little bit. My Shadow Dark Curse of Strahd, but we're still playing. And I've we played two sessions since I've done an update. I'm going to do one for those of you, the, the 20 of you who watch those. <laughs> I, I, I am going to do a review or, or a uh, another Shadow Dark update for the Curse of Strahd. Um, it's kind of slowed down because I think, I mean, a lot of the excitement was obviously for Halloween when we first started, and it was kind of the spooky month of October, but a couple of my players have just had really crazy stuff happening in their lives, and we've not been able to play very much. Um, but I think this Monday we're going to play again, and my, my one player is going to come back into the game. He had to drop out for a while because... You know, personal stuff. He was moving across the country and all that stuff. So, but I think he's, I think he's finally settled in, and I think he's ready to, to to jump back in and play. So, we're going to, well, I think on Monday we'll be playing another session. But I think I'm going to try to wrap it up by summer. Now, initially I had been happy to kind of wrap it up by Christmas, uh, but I think that uh, a lot of people wanted to keep playing, and we weren't really at a place where the story could end easily. So, I think I'm going to try to wrap it up by summer. Um, that way, we can be, be all done for the summer and maybe take a break of a month or so and then maybe start a new campaign or a new adventure or something like that. Um, so that's what I'll be that's what I'll be doing for a few more months. So I'm going to try to maneuver the party to move towards Ravenloft because right now they're in the western end of Barovia and I think I think there's going to be an easy way to do that. I think I'm right now they're investigating trying to find Esmeralda who's gone missing in that portion of Barovia and I think I'm going to try to maneuver them to um, they've already sent Irina to the monastery 
to uh, the monastery where the or the abbey where the abbot is, and I think I'm going to have him send her to the castle. Uh, and then they're going to find out about that, probably have to deal with him, and then rush to the castle to try to rescue her. Or maybe not rush to the castle, but at least try to. Um, and uh, and then that'll be the final day. They'll be in the castle, and that'll be the end of the campaign. So I think I'll be able to finish it up by summer. Uh, they'll, so they'll rescue Esmeralda. They will have um, uh, an extra ally. They'll hear about the monastery. They will go and deal with it, and then they'll find out that Irina has been sent, and then... They'll have to go back through Velaki, and then they'll have all that stuff happening in Velaki, and then they'll head back to uh, so the, the castle itself. Um, so I think that could be could be interesting. But the question then becomes, what am I going to do after that? Because I still want to do... Um, I want to do reviews, but I also kind of want to do campaign stuff on this channel. Cre campaign creation, campaign review, like, you know, recaps. I don't know what exactly what, but I want to do more creative stuff too on on this um, channel because I don't I don't want it to be just reviews. I do like reviews, obviously. And I think a lot of people are watching just the reviews. That's fine. Uh, again, like I said, I'm not really doing this for ads. I'm not doing it for money. I'm not doing it for clicks necessarily. So um, I want people to see what I'm doing, obviously. But I'm not. Um, you know, the, the 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 lower performing videos are in my mind just as valuable as the higher performing videos. So I'm going to be doing um, something. And the question is what? Uh, what kind of campaign am I going to run next? Now that the, there are a couple tempting options. Gods of the Forbidden North is certainly up there. And so a, a one of the things that I was thinking about doing was maybe doing like a process of conversion for Gods of the Forbidden North to Shadow Dark. And, and also just to you know, personalize it to my own campaign. So like campaign prep videos. I don't know if people would watch that. Uh, another idea is just to do an entirely new campaign world, an entirely new campaign from scratch using the books that I have as inspiration and using tables from the books that I have and you know all the different things. So kind of showing a, a general campaign prep uh, rather than using a specific module uh, coming up with everything. That's another option. I have a couple worlds in mind that I might want to develop. Um, and I have my, my kind of long-standing world that I've used for some time. Um, uh, that I was running games in for a, for a bit, and so I could use that too. And then the last thing, of course, would be a Dolmenwood campaign because I do want to I do want to play Dolmenwood when it comes out, uh, and I do want to prepare that. Now the books are basically in their final form; they're not physical physically released yet. But I ha I just got the player's book, and I think it's final. It's in its final form. The, the 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 world guide is not yet done. I think the monster manual is not yet finished, but a lot of the stuff is almost done. So I could start uh, a Dolmenwood campaign prep, but one of the things about Dolmenwood is that I love it so much, I, I, I want to run it almost as written. So a prep series on that wouldn't be very long, because I, I think mostly it would be me reading through the books and, and, and changing things here or there, tweaking things here or there. I think what I would probably do if I ran a Dolmenwood campaign was would be to become very familiar with the books and then prepare session by session uh, in a particular region and not plan a whole campaign or not build a whole campaign, because I do want to kind of run those books as written. You know, that's that's part of the thing about running books as written is that you your prep really goes down. You have to be familiar with the book and then you can just, you know, I like to ad lib and, and, and change things. And then as the campaign goes on, it becomes more personalized and therefore I have to take more notes and prepare more. But early on, you just kind of you know, wing it with the world. And, and if you know the world enough, if you're familiar with it enough, you don't have to do much work. Uh, it's very lazy, but I like it. I, it ends up, I think, usually ending, I end up having fun games. Okay, so that's that's one thing I could do, would be to um, would be to do a Dolmenwood prep. But again, I think that would be the least involved. So um, yeah, I'm kind of up in the air. Uh, one of the campaigns that I was thinking of building, one of the world campaigns, would be uh, kind of an urban setting, but like a ruined urban setting. Like so, like I'm thinking of something like a, a fantasy medieval version or a fantasy world version of like Coruscant, right, where you have the whole world as one big city, or at least the city is so big people in the center of it don't know where the edge is, right? You just travel and travel and you go through the city and there's just this massive city you're going through. But it's it's mostly in ruins, it's mostly overgrown. There are, you know, like it'd be a hex crawl sort of, but in all, every hex is a different part of the city. Um, and I know that there are products out there like that already, but I would want to develop one kind of on my own and then build the world of it. And I'm thinking of, of a world with a lot of really, really high towers that spire above um, the kind of green below, but then you can go down under the green canopy to the, like where the old streets of the city were, and then maybe down into like the sewer systems below, and uh, build that out. I, that has really, really interested me for some time now. 
And I've held off because I, it, it's kind of a daunting task, to be honest, um, because you, you, you have to build in kind of every dimension, right? You got to go up, you got to go down, you got to go out. And I know that you could easily make it zone based and things like that, but I, I really do want to build out kind of a cool campaign that way, I think. And I think for that sort of game, I would probably, I would probably use Shadow Dark, but I, I don't know because there are a couple other game systems that I was thinking of for an urban campaign like that. Things that are, well, anyway, that's a, that's another neither here nor there. But if you guys are interested in any one of those, let me know. Because in my mind, I can't really make up my mind right now. I can talk to my players and say, hey, what would sound good after we finish this? What kind of a campaign would be more fun to you? But I would rather have something kind of quasi-developed first rather than promise something and then not have a good result. So what I would like to do is do some work on a, maybe a couple of them and then see which one seems to be coming together the best and to be like, hey, this is what I've developed. Does this sound interesting to you guys? But not, you know, do all of the work so that way if they say, actually, that's not terribly interesting to us, that way I don't, you know, haven't wasted all of my time. <laughs> So anyway, let me know what you guys uh, think about that and if there's anything that would be interesting for you to see um, in that way. All right, I think that's it. It's not a very long video, as I said. I just wanted to reiterate thank you to everybody who has subscribed and who watches my videos. It's super cool. I never thought I would get to 1,000, uh, let alone 1,100. What is it, 25 now or something like that. So <laughs> thank you guys to everybody who's, who's in. And um, yeah, I'll catch you guys in another video. See ya.